Hi there. Welcome back to our video series on HR driven provisioning. My name is Chetan Desai and I'm a product manager on the Azure AD team. In our last video, we reviewed the two main solution components involved in HR driven provisioning. The Azure AD provisioning service that provides native connectors to HR apps and the provisioning agent deployed on premises to manage AD user accounts. In this video, we will walk through the seven step process to deploy HR driven provisioning from success factors to your on premises Active Directory. If you don't have an on premises Active Directory and want to provision cloud only users directly to Azure AD, you can still follow along. We will call out steps that you can skip if your target is Azure AD. Let's start with step one. In this step, we will log in to the Entra admin portal and create the success factors to AD user provisioning app from the enterprise app gallery. If you have multiple AD domains to manage, you can create multiple provisioning apps, one for each AD domain. In the Entra admin portal, access the enterprise applications blade. Click on new application and search for success factors. You will see three different applications that support provisioning capability. The success factors write back app, the success factors to Azure AD user provisioning app, and the success factors to Active Directory user provisioning app. If you want to provision cloud only users, select the success factors to Act Azure AD user provisioning app. In this case, since we want to provision on-premises Active Directory, I'm going to select the success factors to Active Directory user provisioning app. Provide a descriptive name for your app and click on Create. That completes step number one of this process. Going to step two, in this step, we will download and install the Azure AD Connect provisioning agent on a Windows server that has connectivity to the on-premises AD domain services. If you want to provision cloud-only users to Azure AD, you can skip this step and go directly to step three. In the Entra portal, open the application created in step one and go to the provisioning blade. Set the provisioning mode to automatic. Click on the banner displaying the provisioning agent installation instructions, download the provisioning agent, and install it on a Windows Server machine. On the Windows Server, run the provisioning agent wizard. Select the option to enable the HR extension. Click on Next, and connect to your Azure AD tenant using your app admin credentials. I'm entering the credentials here. I just confirmed the multi-factor authentication on my phone. And now we will register the Active Directory domains with our Azure AD tenant. We are now ready to go to step three. In this step, we will establish connectivity with success factors tenant. The Azure AD success factors connector uses the success factors OData API to fetch worker data. Engage your success factors admin to create an account with role-based permissions to access worker data. For specific configuration step, refer to AKMS slash success factors. Now that we have completed the connectivity prerequisites, let's go back to the Entra portal Open the application provisioning blade and enter the following connectivity details in the admin credentials, credentials section. The success factors service account username, password, the tenant URL, and the Active Directory domain that you'd like to manage using this app. The AD domain dropdown shows all domains registered using the provisioning agent wizard. Click on test connection to ensure connectivity to both AD and success factors. We are now at step four. 
In this step, we will configure scoping rules, which is a mechanism to restrict the provisioning to a select group of users. This is helpful when you are initially testing the integration or if you want to perform phased production rollout by department, country, or region. A related best practice that we recommend is setting the skip out of scope deletions flag, which you can set using the link shown here. Now let's go back to the intra portal and expand the attribute mappings section and click on provision success factors users. The source object scope is by default set to all users. You can edit it to add your own scoping filters. In this case, I have set it to process users belonging to the shared services department. Further, under target object actions, you can constrain what actions the provisioning app can perform in your Active Directory domain. Having set the scoping rules, we can now go to step five, where we will configure the attribute mappings that determine how success factors attribute values flow into your Active Directory. The provisioning app ships with a default set of mappings based on how you handle pre-hire processing, conversions, and terminations in success factors, you can customize the attribute mappings. Refer to our success factors integration guide for more details on customizations. Now let's look at the attribute mapping section in our provisioning app. The first attribute mapping shows the matching identifier attribute that will be used to link success factors profiles with AD accounts. By default, this matching identifier is set to use person ID external that matches with the AD employee ID attribute. In this setup, I have also configured expression mappings to generate user principal names and assign the user to a specific OU in Active Directory. To add new mappings, you can click on the add new mapping link. We are now ready to go to step six, where we will test the provisioning flow from success factors to AD. We recommend using provision on demand capability to test the flow individually for a few users. Depending on the complexity of your provisioning flow, it is a good practice to first test the integration in a non-production setup before promoting the integration to production. To test the provisioning, open the provisioning blade of your application and click on provision on demand. Enter the person ID external of a worker in success factors and click on provision. The provisioning app will pull the worker information from success factors, apply the sync rules configured in the attribute mapping and display the final result of user creation. You can review each provisioning step here and check if it worked as expected. We now come to the last step in this configuration to monitor provisioning flow and trigger alerts on certain operation failures. You can configure Azure Monitor referring to the link shown here. If you want to trigger additional automations for your joiner, mover, lever scenarios, we highly recommend configuring the Azure AD Lifecycle Workflows feature. To access the Azure AD Lifecycle Workflows feature, open the Identity Governance Blade in the Intra Portal and click on Lifecycle Workflows. Here, you can use predefined templates to configure joiner workflows to define what automations to run when a pre-hire record is created, when a new, new hire starts on day one, or when someone leaves the company. With that, we come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this video useful. To learn more and for links to documentation on this topic, check the description below. See you next time.